Hello, it's James from X-Robots. This is part two of the setup and build of this CNC machine, which came from cncruouterparts.com. So thanks again to them for sending me this machine. Check out part one to see the assembly. In this video, hopefully we're gonna cut something. But first of all, I've got to do something about the mess and noise. So I'm gonna build a massive booth in this corner to keep all of that in. And that's going to look something like this, which is a big booth in the corner that doesn't touch the table. It's freestanding, attached to the wall, so the vibrations on the table don't get carried through to the outside. We can have some clear panels in the top and the sides here so we can see what's going on and get lighting for filming. And the bottom will have removable panels so that we can get under the table to turn the machine on. I'm also going to be putting soundproof foam in the back of the box that looks like this. So this is going to go in that wall in the corner there to stop reverberation. So we should be able to kill lots of the noise as well before it even tries to get out of the box. So I've stuck some battens on the wall there which is going to make the uh, main outline of the box and that's the wall that my foam needs to go in. So I'm going to stick that in before I do too much and I can't get the foam in past the other bits of wood. Right, I've pinned that foam up with some washers and screws so it's all nicely fitted in there. So now we can put the lid on and the wood at the front. So that's my front corner installed and of course I've got the square here at the top that's going to make the roof. So I've got some more beams around the middle here, the same height as the table and of course around the bottom edge so I can put a wooden panel on the bottom and the clear stuff on the top. I'm using this twin wall polycarbonate stuff for conservatory roofs for the clear panels. It's not completely clear but it is cheap. This massive sheet was £30. If I wanted to fill a whole metre square here with, say, 10 mm acrylic, that would be about £100, so this is much, much cheaper. Obviously, it will let the light in and I can remove the panels for filming or just put a GoPro inside. So I put my clear roof on. I'm probably going to light inside the box anyway, but for now, I've still got that light hanging from the ceiling and I've got this other beam in here so we can make a removable panel on the side for filming in that way. And we're going to have a big removable panel here so I can actually just obviously get to the machine for all the times I need to do something and then put the panel on to keep the dust and noise in. So I've made these panels with some of that twin wall polycarbonate and a wooden frame on the back and some of them I've got a handle on the front so they're really easy to remove because most of these are going to be removable so I can get to the inside. There's a couple of those with removable panels so this is the other one which comes off like that so we can get to the entire front of the machine and that just slots into a batten which is right at the back here so there's a nice slot that that goes into. The other one overlaps this piece of wood and that slots in just like that. I've got some bungee tie backs here that just hold all these panels on all the way around and that keeps them in place. This side panel is also removable so I can point a camera or lights in there. It's pretty tight fit. Most of the time it will be permanently installed but sometimes I can take it out if I really need to. The bottom panels here also remove. I was going to put windows in or little doors that open. This one will be pretty much permanently installed. It does come out. This one does come out quite easily so I can get to the switches on the boxes that control the machine. So that's everything installed. I'm not sure if this is going to make it much quieter. Um, we'll have to see really. I guess it'll make it a bit quieter, but let's ramp that spindle up. Obviously I haven't cut anything yet. That'll be noisier, but let's ramp that spindle back up to 24,000 RPM. Um, then we'll take the door off and we'll see uh, what the difference is, I guess. So we'll just start there, that's uh, 8,700 RPM. I'm just gonna crank it up. It doesn't sound quite as terrifying as I did last time when I first powered it up out of its box. Let's just take that all the way up. So that's 24,000 RPM. Yeah, I can definitely hear it. It's gonna make a sound when it's cutting. But now let's open this box up. Yeah, it's considerably louder. So the other thing, of course, is keeping the dust in. I do need some sort of dust extraction system. It may just be that I dip in with the vacuum cleaner when I'm filming it. Obviously, we don't really want to cover the cutting bit because I want to actually um, see it cutting and get good shots of video with nice lighting. So we probably need to put some LED strips in there as well. I found these LED inspection lamps. 
which I'm going to put in the box. And those were £17 each from B&Q in the UK, if anyone wants to know. So now it's time to actually cut something. The first thing I need to do is a squaring and a tramming test. So I've temporarily fixed down a piece of MDF. We're going to cut a square and check that it is square. So I've been given a piece of software called Vectric Aspire, which is a UK company called Vectric who've got various easy CNC software. So it's a design tool and also generates the G code. So I've drawn my square here, which is 300 mil square. I've highlighted my drill holes in the corner. We're just going to drill four holes and check that the diagonals are the same. There's various other drawing tools. You can also map a sketch onto a 3D object and lots of other clever things. So the next stage is to select the drilling pattern here. We can do various different things. This one's not particularly exciting, but it'll basically allow us to set that in multiple passes. So we're going to do an 8mm hole um, in 3mm drill so it cleans out the hole each time. There's various other options on here. And then we can actually calculate that. We can see the tool path it takes, so it moves above the piece, which is what those red lines are, and the blue lines are the drills into the piece. We can actually preview that. It doesn't take very long, this one, so I'm just going to step through it, and we should be able to see those holes actually being drilled. We can play it at different speeds as well, and that shows us what we've got in the end. And then we can go and export our G code for that particular machine. So I've got my 6mm wood cutter fitted there in the correct collet onto the cutter. And I've got my Z end finder there, so if we just jog that down a little bit and then use the auto Z function on Mac 3, it should go down till it touches the plate. That seems to be working so far. And that raises it a known height above the zero point for the piece of wood. I told a spy that the corner of the piece is here actually, which is slightly smaller than the workpiece, and that's for the actual thing I'm cutting the drill holes are going to be within that in a 300 mil square. So I just need to get this to the corner of the piece and sort of jog that around till I'm happy that it's in the right place. Yes, this thing is actually a corner finder as well, but I can't quite work out how to do that yet. So I'll look into that. Okay, so I thought before I actually cut it with the spindle turning, I'm going to test actually and see if it does what I think it should do. So I've raised the spindle up, told it that's where zero is. I haven't turned the spindle on and I'm going to run the G code and see if it looks like it's doing something sensible. So let's just run that. Okay, it started the spindle automatically, but uh, there we go. Okay, there's one hole. Alright, so that looked pretty good. Obviously, if I'd zeroed it at the wood, then it would have drilled the holes. So let's do it for real. Well, it drilled four holes. I think my cutting speed was a bit high because there's MDF stuck in the cutter and you can see the uh, holes are actually burnt. So it's running at 18,000 RPM. I think it should have been about half that, but uh, there we go. I need to check those settings in Aspire for next time. So now I can measure diagonally between my holes here and check they're square. And um, it's not as accurate as it could be using a tape measure. I should probably use something else, but we've got about 42.4 there. And if I just find the edge of the hole, yeah, that looks pretty good there as well. So uh, the machine's been built pretty square, so we should be all right. As I mentioned in part one, we've got a home switch here, and there's also one in this corner. So adjusting this one in and out will adjust the square of the machine between the ball screws on each side. So the next thing to do is check the machine and the spindles actually square this way. Um, and we can do that by using this big end mill. It's a half mill end mill by cutting a pattern, basically, then seeing if there's ridges between the lines we've cut or whether we've made a smooth surface. The squareness of the spindle can be adjusted. This whole uh, thing will tip and we've got one of those weird offset nuts with an offset hole in, so you loosen all the bolts. Then you can turn this with a spanner and you can get that perfectly level. This is a messy one, so I've got my vacuum cleaner ready to collect all the dust.
Well, I'm definitely going to need some better dust extraction. You can get a dust hood that fits over that with a brush that sucks all the dust up to a dust extractor, so we might have to look at that. But for now, these pieces seem perfectly smooth. They're actually really, really level. So I think my machine is built pretty square. So I'm pretty happy the machine's set up. We're actually going to leave it there today because I've got quite a lot to learn about CNC. Imagine you were cutting material by hand. You'd actually have to learn loads of things about the cutting speed, the feed rate, how fast you can push the tool, all of those things, especially when we come onto metals, we need cooling, chip extraction, and lots of other things. And all of those rules still apply to this, it's just they have to be programmed in. So it's a lot more complicated than 3D printing where you can pretty much load up Cura or whatever, click the default settings, and the parts will come out just about okay. This is actually quite a lot of thinking about how the toolpath looks, how many passes you have to do, the actual pattern of the toolpath so you don't put too much load on the cut bit and lots of other stuff like that. So thanks again to CNC Router Parts for sending me the machine and Vectric for sending me the software. There's going to be lots of projects using this machine as well as probably some dedicated CNC projects in the channel. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this machine and all the other projects. Alright that's all for now.